Mawase kanu yinina Ya utolu tokoro Dasabu yemu yala Images are everywhere and they're moving everywhere. We're living in a world where really one wants to somehow question what are the tides of globalisation by, in a way, posing the question that an artist might pose. And that might be trying to question the way that those images may come about in certain locations. A exposição Geopoéticas apresenta o artista inglês Isaac Julian em sua primeira mostra individual no Brasil, abrangendo mais de 30 anos de trajetória artística. Compõe a curadoria, quatro instalações, entre elas Ten Thousand Waves, seu trabalho mais recente e sete de seus filmes. As obras, com acentuado viés político-poético, abordam questões históricas de gênero e sexualidade, marcadas por uma visão pós-colonialista. Vamos percorrer com essa série de sete programas as principais questões que norteiam a produção de Isaac Julian, apresentando seus filmes inéditos na televisão brasileira e suas instalações. É importante notar que o mesmo rigor formal e estético presente em seus filmes, com apurada fotografia, dramaturgia e narrativa, desdobra-se nas instalações, gerando um instigante conjunto de obras que dialogam intensamente entre si, gerando uma multiplicidade de visões e abordagens. Well, I was born in London in 1960. My parents immigrated from St. Lucia at the end of the 50s. The inspiration for making art really began in the East End of London, where I grew up, because I was very fortunate to live in a street where artists live. I began really my sort of artistic practice when I went to St. Martin's School of Art, which was between 1980 and 1984. By the time I was 20 at St. Martin's School of Art, I already knew that I wanted to make films. I already knew that I was very interested in the moving image. The 12th of January, 1983, Colin Roach found dead in Stoke Newington Police Station. So Martin School of Art was really very instrumental because the course I attended was a very special course. I studied painting, sculpture and photography and was very interested in a certain interdisciplinary approach to making art. How far should we go to begin our story, a history of carnival? to 1976, to 1966, or to 1959? Or should we turn to its origins in the Caribbean, in Africa, in ancient Babylon, centuries before Christ? It's territories, the contradictory spaces, which are the geographical expressions of the city. The territories of class, labor, race, sex, relations. And the identity that I'm searching for in looking for Langston is really the question of a black gay desire. Where would that be located in history? You write to three. I think works rather well in terms of making images which are kind of more imagistic in nature and in a way poses questions which are not as didactical as they would be in the kind of more political registers. I wondered as you wandered and I've seen how far you've come Though history's forgotten names It's really connected to these concerns of how one marries the poetic to the political and vice versa. 
It's a film which is about mourning the dad. It was made at a time when AIDS was very much in full sort of stride, a time when lots of people that I knew were dying. A person does not lightly elect to oppose his society. One would much rather be at home among one's compatriots than be mocked and detested by them. Trying to utilize the poems of Langston Hughes was really part of trying to form a certain visual vocabulary, a vocabulary which was located in the ways in which we're trying to think or rethink cinema in Britain in the late 1980s. In the dark, we don't have to say, I love you. The dark swallows it and sighs like we sigh when we rise from our knees. I remember the sea. I remember the garden. I remember the cottage. But most of all, I remember you. Dear Derek, Derek, it was a film because of its biographical nature as being quite contemporary. Derek Jarman, who died in 1994 of AIDS, it was something that was quite challenging and I think also very important because there's a way in which I think the distant or not too distant past is always very difficult to represent. My parents got married in, in 1940. It was March the 30th. Apparently, it was the day when the most marriages happened in the 40s. <laughs> Someone told me this. It was very interesting to be able to utilise Derek's interview that Colin McCabe made in 1990. Whether people liked the film or not, they all liked that. They all came to see that. So maybe it was a film that people just came to see that. So Derek could, as it were, speak literally almost from the grave. Derek cinema, it was always very important as a barometer for challenging the status quo. The use of sound, the use of the rhythmic way, perhaps the images are working. All of these are the components which are, in a way, trying to evoke this other way of thinking, which may not be connected to certain forms of rationality. in the question of the poetics of making images, that you're always interested in trying to question those ways of thinking that which seem... One of the things around making films involved in a structuralist filmmaking course is the idea of thinking about image and sound in a non-diegetic manner. you don't have the literal correspondence between sound and image. And when I lived in New York in the mid-90s, it became very clear to me that the sorts of experiments which were taking place in the gallery context. <laughs> it 
the difference between making films and moving image of works in the gallery is really to connect it to a certain autonomy or freedom. To my mind, it became very interesting to think about a more sculptural relationship to the image, thinking about how one could then bring narrative to play or non-narrative images to play across many screens, and that could be a new way, perhaps, of experiencing the moving image. connection to a certain notion of trying to seduce the audience with certain ways of filming, trying to input different ways of aesthetics and different ways of pictorial interventions into those spaces that might in a way radically reframe them, trying to break rules of really not adhering to the kind of classical kind of paradigms that you get in these contexts and to break open the white cube, also kind of challenge the sort of orthodoxies of the kind of black box in relationship to the kind of more theatrical context. There's quite a lot of double standards at work, I think, in the way in which we're placing in one context, in a high cultural context, sort of the ways in which you should be looking at images, which obviously should be more critical, and that of the popular context, where there's a less criticality, there's more of the relationship to entertainment, to pleasure. There's this kind of attraction and also pull away. There are works that I've made, that when I look at them even now, sometimes they're kind of uncomfortable. I think that's really important, but at the same time, something that can be quite enchanting. You know, having both those things are very important aspects of making work for me. I enjoy the idea of taking risk in the work. To do that, there is a certain attitude perhaps that one has to adopt. 